Good day. Uh, so this presentation is about uh, the research that we just published in nature climate change. And um, so we know that uh, climate change is going to result in sea level rise in the next century. Uh, the IPCC has reported a lot of uh, evidence and provided some projections uh, about how much sea level will change in the next 100 years. And their last uh, report in 2007 indicated uh, a global sea level rise of up to point eight meters. And this sea level rise, we also know, will result in coastline recession or, or coastal erosion around the world. So um, on open coastlines like this, which are very long straight beaches, uh, in response to this sea level rise, what will happen is the coastline will move up and backwards. And this is uh, known as the Brun effect, uh, because this is an effect that was conceptualized by a scientist called Per Brun uh, about 50 years ago. So what is this Brun effect? Uh, if you uh, imagine a coastal profile like this, so that's the landward side and that's the seaward side, and the blue indicates uh, the sea. And if the present day mean sea level is, is right there, uh, let's say by uh, 2100, uh, you have a sea level rise amount of S, indicated like this, and in response to that, what will happen is this whole profile will move upward and backward, as shown by this red line. Uh, and then that will result in the coastline itself receding backward. So it's that amount R is the amount of recession. And this amount, according to Broom, can be estimated very simply by this very simple equation that equates the recession amount to the sea level rise divided by the slope uh, of this active profile. So it's a very simple equation, which is very popular. It's used in uh, a lot of coastal zone hazard studies uh, because it's basically a back of the on without calculation. There are some problems with this. We know about these problems, but because it's very easy to use, people continue to use this. But there are also a lot of coastlines around the world that are not long and straight like that and are interrupted by inlets. And there are tens of thousands of these kind of inlets around the world. Which they come in various shapes and sizes. Uh, they have a different morphological conditions. So these are just some examples I picked. Um, so that's uh, ones from the US, from Australia, um, and from the Middle Eastern region. Uh, so these are very, very commonly found um, around the world. Now, on this kind of this kind of coast that, that are interrupted by inlets, we refer to them as inlet interrupted coastlines. Uh, the recession process is a little bit more complicated than open coastlines that I described earlier. So on these kind of coastlines, the recession is not only governed by the Brun effect, but also by other processes. So here, in these systems, we do have sea level rise, the effect of sea level rise, but also on the landward side, climate change can also result in increased or decreased uh, river flows, and, and as also resulting from that, you could get more or less sediment coming into the system. So there's these two uh, combined effects that will lead, that will contribute to coastline erosion here, as I will explain. Uh, now, a, a major uh, uh, reason why such a model that combines the sea level rise effect and these hydrological effects have not been developed up to date was because uh, these are two different disciplines. So we all came this hurdle by combining in our team people who know a lot about what happens here, so coastal engineers, and then also people who know a lot about what happens here, which means hydrology. So we could maybe we had a very nice multidisciplinary team uh, to develop the model that we uh, developed in this study. So what happens because of sea level rise is the first effect, the Brun effect that operates on open coastline is still active here. But in addition to that, because of the effect of this basin, uh, we also have another effect called basin infilling. Uh, so what happens here is when the sea level goes up on the ocean side, the sea level also goes up on the estuary side, and as a result, the, the volume of water in the estuary increases, but a system doesn't like this. It always tries to retain its pre-climate uh, change uh, equilibrium. It doesn't like change, so it wants to, to maintain its equilibrium condition, and, and in trying to do so, to, to compensate for this increased uh, volume of water, it gets sand from the ocean side, meaning from the coastline, to raise its bed level, so the volume remains the same. And that's known as the basic infill effect. So that, those are two effects due to sea level rise, and due to uh, increase or decrease of river flow, 
and, and flow bed sediment. Also, the basin volume will change because, again, uh, the system will try to maintain its equilibrium velocities everywhere in every cross section. And when the river flow or the, or the sand input from the river increases or decreases, that will uh, change uh, the conditions inside the basin. So then the basin will try to adjust by either raising its bed level or lowering its bed level. So the basin volume will change. So what we simply did was to combine all these effects in one equation, and that is basically our model, the new model. And uh, delta CT is the total potential coastline recession. Um, and each of those effects uh, that I processes that I uh, explained to you earlier are represented by each of these terms. So the first term is basically the Brun effect, and the second term is the effect of basin infilling due to sea level rise. The third term is uh, the Basin volume change due to river flow, and this last term is the term representing changes uh, in fluvial sediment transport into the system. So, as you can see, it's a very simple equation, it doesn't need any iterations or, or long programming, it's, it's very simple to solve. And all of those parameters are indicated in these two figures down there if you're interested. So, we can uh, really make a very rapid estimate of uh, what coastline change will be on these type of inlets. And we can, because it is really fast, we can also do multiple simulations, like a Monte Carlo simulation that will then take into account the uncertainty associated with parameters like sea level or river flow changes due to climate change. There's a lot of uncertainty in the IPCC projection, so we could account for those and come up with a range of coastline change values. Um, so I will not talk more about the model, but I'll show you uh, one example application. So this is an example in Western Australia, in Perth. Uh, the city of Perth is around here. It's a, it's a city of about 2 million people, the capital in Western Australia. And that's the Swan River around which the city is built. There's a port here, as you can see. Um, and the blue line here indicates what the coastline recession would have been uh, if um, we only used the Brune effect. And that is what is used mostly in studies these days. And the red line indicates the coastline recession that is predicted by our new model, which you can see is quite a bit landward. If you zoom in on that, on this yellow box, uh, you can see more clearly uh, the difference between the two lines. So basically, the red line is about 100 meters landward of the, of the blue line, which means if you use currently adopted methods like the Brun effect, the Brun rule, then uh, we will uh, under predict our coastline recession by 100 meters. And that makes a difference because you can see, if you just look at the blue line, there's not much infrastructure or houses, uh, landward, or seaward of that line. But if you look at the red line, there's a lot of, uh, there's this major highway, there's a lot of infrastructure belonging to the port, I think, uh, uh, seaward of that red line, which means all those uh, properties, all that infrastructure is under threat. And if we don't, uh, make our coastal zone management plans uh, accounting for such uh, potential damages so uh, there can be uh, massive losses in the future. So uh, in our study, we applied this model to several locations around the world, so from several more from Australia and also uh, in Asia. And what our results show is that um, basically the, the climate change driven coastline change along coastlines are Underpredicted by about 50 to 75 percent if we use presently used methods. And uh, that is mainly because uh, presently used methods do not account for climate change driven changes in river flow uh, and the basic infilling effect. And so we conclude that um, these effects should not be neglected in future studies. So uh, these are the results that we have published uh, in this publication. If you have uh, any questions or comments, I'll uh, be very pleased to hear from you. You can contact me uh, on my email address, which is published on the UNESCO IG website. Thank you.